Hello everyone. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. Today's topic is going to be minding your manners. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy the show. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker, and I am your host. And today's topic is going to be minding your manners. Minding your manners. Good morning. I decided to talk about minding your manners because when I'm out in public, I have a way of doing something that I like to call people watching. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other people do this too. Well, you just sit back and you observe the way people interact with one another. Sometimes these are people that know each other and sometimes you pay attention to the way people act that don't know each other. You know, they, they don't have no relationship or, or anything like that. And... I almost want to say sometimes when I'm observing us as a people, because most times I, um, most times I'm in a company of us. The only way I'm in a company of, um, people that are different races is when I'm like in town center or, you know, over there by Whole Foods or something like that. But for the most part, I'm around black folk for the most part. And it's almost like I understand why we are getting the reputation of being angry black women. From the way we talk to our children, uh, from the way we interact with strangers who are being polite to us sometimes. And you know, every now and then we'll get those people who or nasty, you know, have nasty attitudes and all of this. And then all the way down to the way we deal with our man, our husbands, helpmates, partners, or whatever it is that you want to call them. I made a comment because I have been taught to be courteous and to be grateful and to not take anything for granted, even down to a damn erection. I don't take nothing for granted because I understand that everybody can't do it. And when you start having an understanding that everybody can't get their dick hard, you tend to start being grateful for a person who can get it hard. I have learned to be grateful. I, I posted a picture and my husband was in the store and he was updating my video surveillance in the store, I ordered another, well, let me just tell you, I took it upon myself and I ordered a whole list system. I didn't consult with him or anything. And when he got it, he was like, why, you know, why did you get this? And I was like, well, you know, it said it did this and it said it did that. He was like, he was like did you, um, did you research the company? I was like, well, no, you know, I just clicked on it, saw it, and bought it. Well, anyway, I ended up having to send all of that back, and he ended up having to order what I actually needed um, to go with the cameras that I already got because I was really just adding more cameras. And I posted the picture, and I said, I, I thank God for my husband. Like, I am blessed to be able to have somebody to be able to do things like this for me. I need my husband. I need my husband. I know some women say they don't need their husbands. They don't need no man, all this stuff. And I said, I need my husband. There were women that took offense to that. Seriously, that took offense to me saying that I needed my husband. And I think that when you have a mentality like those type of women, you tend, somewhere along the lines, you have been hurt. And it's like, you don't even know how to allow other people to enjoy their happiness because you spew your negativity off on other people. And the lady responded, all you need is God. That's what she said. All you need is God. 
And that is true. I do need God, but I need my husband too. So my response was, if we don't need men, if they're not needed, why were they created? Somebody else said that for me. If there is no purpose for men, why were they created? The reason why I named this video Mind Your Manners is because I need you to understand how the world sees you. When I when I go out into the world as a black woman, as a professional, as a business owner, as a mother, as a wife, I take into consideration that I represent everybody in my family every time I cross my door sill. That's why I don't leave out my house with bonnets on. That's why I make sure that when I leave, I'm dressed for the day. Even if I'm putting on a jogging suit, I'm dressed for the day. I'm not in my pajamas. I'm going to change out of my pajamas and I'm going to put some clothes on because I have an understanding that I'm going out into the world and I represent my whole family. I might walk out there and see somebody that Spencer used to work with when he was doing commercial air conditioning. I might walk out there and see one of my students that I used to teach. I might walk out there and see one of my daughter's friends or their family or some of my customers. I need you to understand that we have gotten away from so much. I watched a man open up a door for a woman and, sh and, and they were not together. He was just really being polite. He opened up the door for her and she just walked right on in. She did not say thank you. She didn't, she did not acknowledge the gesture at all. And the man said, well, thank you. And she said, so y'all men want somebody to be praising y'all for that? I could have did that myself. Lord have mercy. I had women on that same comment with my husband putting up the surveillance saying I could have did that. But the thing is, why do we have to do the things that, that, that men can do? It's some other shit that we could be doing. Everybody complain about they don't have good men out there. But then when the good men show up and start doing the things that men do, we don't even know how to say thank you. We don't even know how to show appreciation. We don't even have manners anymore. Even if you messed up along the way, I want you to start instilling certain things in your daughters, in your children, even in your sons. Have manners when you're dealing with people. Um, basically, I just want us to, to get back to having common courtesy, uh, instilling certain things in our children, letting them know when they come out into the world that they represent all of themselves, but they family. See, I remember a point in time you didn't do, do certain shit. Because you didn't want to shame your family. You didn't want to embarrass your whole family. Because you knew if you did certain things, it was going to embarrass your family. We don't have shame as a people anymore at all. We do things and we have no type of more compass about it at all because we don't care about nothing. A lot of people on here telling me, Sharonda, you're doing the wife school, but you need to do a husband school. Yeah, I hear you, but no, I need to do a wife school. You know why? Because you need to know how to select men, not boys, not males. The problem is you have not been selecting men to be in your life and it has turned out bad for you. And now when it comes down to dealing with males, whether they boys or men, you have a bad taste in your mouth because you had a bad experience. So it caused you to be mean and bitter to everybody to the point where people open up doors for you. You don't even know how to open up your fucking mouth and say thank you no more. We got to get back to being courteous and saying please and thank you and letting our children see us handle people in love and say please and thank you. Even when my children do things for me, I say thank you. Can you please do this? When I'm talking to them, it's not in a hostile manner or angry or cursing at them all day long. With trying to get things done. If they not doing things that's supposed to be done. I'm not around here cursing them out. And calling them all kind of motherfuckers. And bitches and all this shit. I don't, I don't talk to my children like that. But I just want us to just be better. As women. Period. So. Mind your manners. Y'all want to talk about feminine asset. 
one of the, one of the main things that a feminine asset is is she has manners. She know how to handle herself with class. We talk about feminine asset. Have manners. When people take you out somewhere, you don't. They don't want you to shame them. When your man does a good job, tell him he did a good job. When I said I, said, I, I told him I said when when I get through having sex, I kiss my husband, and I tell him, baby, thank you. And the woman said, oh no, I, I can't do that because that sounds like too much. Like uh, I'm a hoe. She said that. She said that she not telling no man thank you after sex because she she will feel like a hoe like some type of paid services or something that went on. And that is just so strange to me to feel like a hoe by telling somebody that they did a, a wonderful job with pleasing you sexually. It's nothing wrong with you being honest and saying, you know what, that was amazing. You did a wonderful job taking care of me sexually, pleasing me, making sure my body is satisfied. There's nothing wrong with you letting somebody know that they did a good job. You want to know what the feminine asset is? We talk about it in the wife school, but I'm giving you little bitty pointers. But the things that I'm telling you, it don't matter about if you're a wife. The things that I'm sharing with you, it ain't got nothing to do with if you're a wife. It got everything to do with you being a decent woman. Okay? So, that's going to conclude my live. I want to tell you about this honey cat. This is a mixed drink that you can make with your honey. All right, honey cat, two ounces of tequila, gold or silver, two ounces of lemon juice, one pack of honey. Shake the ingredients together in the shaker. Pour or strain everything into a high ball, depending on whether you want ice cubes or not. Garnish with a twist of lemon. Uh, and I'm sorry, garnish with a twist of lemon peel or add nothing at all. Y'all know, I, you know what? I'm, a, I'm actually about to go make me an eye appointment because I'm also realizing that these eyes ain't young like they used to be either. The next mixed drink. And next week I will be making these drinks on live, okay? Pink Sunset. Two ounces of Don Julio. One pack of honey. Three-fourth ounce of fresh lemon juice. Garnish with lemon peel. Optional. All right. So, um, they got pictures of both of them. Hmm? Uh, Yummy yeah, Cummy is behind you. It's blue. You see the blue pack up to the top? That's it. It's four pills in the pack. All right. So, Honey Cat. Pink Sunset, be ready on Monday. I'm going live. I'm making these drinks live. Um, and I want to go in a little deeper into um, why why we need men. Because the, that really kind of bothered me for women to walk around feeling like men are not needed. Like, I understand if you want to be lesbian, that's fine. I don't care about your sexuality. But... Just because you choose to have a, se a certain sexuality does not mean a whole gender needs to be eliminated because you don't feel like they have no purpose. I wanna, I'm want to. i going to have a list of all of the things that we need men to do. And my husband told me, make sure when I put on that list, I put up hanging up pictures. Because he said he look at y'all pictures. Those of y'all that choose to put pictures on your wall, because a lot of women don't even put pictures on their walls and all this stuff at their house. But the pictures that he see, the shit that he see hung up on the walls, he said y'all hanging it up wrong. And y'all need men to come in y'all houses and hang y'all pictures up right. He told me to make sure I told y'all this. So Spencer Parker, I done told them that they don't know how to hang up pictures. And if they don't need a man for nothing else, they need a man to come hang up some damn pictures on their walls because they ain't doing it right. All right. That's going to conclude my live for today. The store hours are 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget, next week I'm going live making these two mixed drinks. This was actually sent to me with the Pink Pussycat Honey. This was sent in the package so that I could um, show y'all how to make the mixed drinks with the honey. So people that send me messages, can you drink on the honey? Yes, you can drink on the honey. 
And I might need to do this here to drink on honey because it tastes like tea to me and I ain't no tea drinker. So with that being said, on Monday, I will be having my own brunch going on up in here. So I might have me some little fruit and stuff. And I will be making me some mixed drinks. And I don't know. I, I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see how this go on Monday. I got to go and get my little glasses and stuff. All right. I'm making sure I don't see any questions, concerns, comments. I don't see any questions, concerns, or comments. Uh, I have eight spots left for the oral sex training. I have about, well, I have openness left for wife school. I have a, I have a lot of ladies that have enrolled in wife school paying the deposit. And I don't want to say that I got this amount of seats left because everybody might not pay off. They, um, everybody may not pay off their deposit. So that would leave room for more people if they wanted to, uh, do the wife school. Um, I have been like really, really studying marriage from different cultures and the different things that are done. The, um, the marriage negotiations and all this. I just think if certain things are done, I wish, I wish the things that I know at 40, I'm not lying. I wish I knew them when I was younger, but the good thing for you is you gonna know. You're not going to be like me doing on a job training. You're not going to be like me trying to figure it out because I never had anybody to, um, to teach me. They taught me certain things, but it was certain things about marriage in particular that they didn't teach me because I didn't really see too many women that were just, you know, married. But it's it's all types of things that they're doing in other cultures that I think will benefit us in our culture. And it will save us a lot of heartache and the pain. Like, you know, suppose you have some paperwork put together and if infidelity does happen in your marriage and you had to walk away from it, you walked away with a settlement. You not, I'm not talking about your divorce. I'm not talking about the house. I'm not, I'm talking about getting paid because he went and did some shit. He ain't had no business doing. In other words, this motherfucker got fined for fucking up. And this ain't got nothing to do with what the judge going to grant you. If you decide to walk away and get a divorce, I'm talking about legal documentation to accommodate you. Because a lot of y'all getting hurt and y'all ain't getting accommodated. And that shit just ain't right to me and all these other cultures that these motherfuckers fuck up. They getting accommodated. What, why the hell we ain't getting accommodated? Why ain't nobody told us about that part? But I'm going to tell you about it. You're going to learn about it from me. Because see, the thing is, a lot of y'all be talking, oh, I'm able to stay at home and I'm able to do this here and I'm able to do that there. Yeah, uh-huh. But a lot of times you're staying at home and somebody else is controlling the finances. We're going to talk about transparency, how you need to be in the know of everything. You need to know all of the insurance. Somebody else told me, I keep looking. Somebody else uh, was telling me, the lady, and she was very sincere, sweet lady. She was on my page and she said she didn't really see the point because everything you do in marriage, you can do single. And she was basically telling me about a power of attorney. We're going to talk about that. Because I need you to understand that the power of attorney is only legal when he's alive. When he dies, the power of attorney dies with him. So that means that you ain't entitled to shit. Everything that you and him built together, his mama got a part in it. His children, other children got a part in it. That shit don't go to you. I need you to understand that having certain types of insurance and stuff is important. If something happened to you and he need to go on Family Medical Leave Act, he can do it because you're his wife, but he can't do it when you're his woman. He can't take off and get paid when you're his woman. So y'all keep talking about marriage don't mean that it ain't holding no weight. I'm seeing it done differently in other cultures, and I'm seeing generational wealth being passed down. I'm seeing all types of um, all types of benefits when it comes down to when shit really matters, when it's important, when decisions are being made. I ain't talking about this rolling over and laughing each other's face and smiling every day type of bullshit. I'm talking about when the shit hit the fan, who gonna be able to handle business? I don't want to go talk to your mammy about doing something for you. I don't want your mammy to have the last say when it come down to something concerning you. I want to have the motherfucking say because I've been the one that's been there. But y'all want to talk about it don't mean nothing. Okay, I got my list. I can't. 
tune in on Monday because I'm going to have my list of the reasons you need to have a motherfucking ring on your finger. The reason they need to pay for the milk and they don't need to be getting it for free. The, I'm going to have the reasons. Okay? The men might not like this video on YouTube, but you're going to be okay.